Hey everybody, thank you for watching Test 2 Plus. I am Trace. This is a podcast style show where we take one topic, we look at it for five episodes in a whole week, we get really into it. And today we have our first guest, Dr. Ian O'Neill. Thank you, Trace. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Very exciting. Today we're talking about aliens, and Dr. Ian O'Neill is a space specialist. He's an astrophysicist. Not an alien expert, though. Mm -hmm. Just saying. That's still, you're going to know more about it than me, probably. But are aliens out there? That's, That's a big question, right? Are they out there? Why haven't we found them? What would they look like? What if they showed up? And we might even answer the question later how we all got here. It's exciting. But first... Are we alone, Ian? In my opinion, no. In science's opinion, I don't know. Probably uh, not. Probably, probably not. Probably not. Maybe. Uh, NASA's chief scientist, Eileen Stoffen, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's talking about microbes, obviously, not like aliens from TV. So like little microbes under Mars rocks. Right, exactly. Okay. And the microbes have been shown to exist in various environments. Tardigrades or water bears can exist in the vacuum of space, and they're just like, what's up? Yeah, a bit cool. like cockroaches. Really, Down. Uh, cockroaches can do that as well. Yeah. So when it comes to finding life outside of Earth, every bit of research I get, it comes to the Drake Equation, which mm-hmm. was written in 1961 by Frank Drake. Can you tell me what the Drake Equation is? Because it seems important. Well, it's mathematics, and I don't like mathematics. But it's based purely on theory. This isn't actually any science really goes into this number. It's purely um, taking into account the rate of star formation. It's taking into account how many stars have planets around them. Um, it's got other, um, other factors like average number of planets that could support life per star and the fraction of planets that could support life, that develop life. So there's a lot of assumptions here, but it all gets thrown into an equation. N equals R star. F P N E F L F I F C L. That's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot. lot. And the thing is, you can put so many other um, other variables in this. You could, you know, as we become more familiar how life form, we can actually work out what other factors can be thrown in, such as you know the correct habitable environment for these uh, for these hypothetical life forms. You pull the numbers into the equation, and you get n which comes out as the number of communicating civilizations that are out there in our galaxy. Well, according to the original equation, 1961, Drake's minimum number of planets that had intelligent broadcasting life was like us enough. Yep. It's 20. That's a pretty good number of planets. It's, it's a cool That's number. That's enough yeah. to make like a whole series in television. 20 different alien races. Yeah, right? that's, that's enough for our little galaxy. Right, you know? yeah. But according to Astrobiology Magazine, it could be as many as 15,785 planets, and some estimates are as high as 100,000, Ian. 100,000 planets with extraterrestrial life that can communicate with Mm. us. That's pretty impressive. Essentially, to put it in perspective, uh, there are 100 Earth-like planets in our galaxy for every grain of sand on every beach and sandbox in the world. A hundred Earth-like planets, planets for every grain of sand. That's the Earth-like ones, not all planets, just mm-hmm. Earth-like ones. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yep. So we're not alone, right? I mean, mathematically speaking, we cannot be alone. So, of course, this all brings us to the Fermi Paradox, which asks, if there are all these transmitting aliens out there, why haven't we heard from them yet? Why aren't they knocking on our door? Where are they? That makes sense. But we're going to talk about that later. Not today. Later. There's also the critiques of the Drake Equation that say that it doesn't take into account other galaxies, yeah, which we know are around. Mm-hmm. They're pretty far away, of course, but it doesn't take that into account. It doesn't take into a, I mean, just for every star in the Milky Way, there's a whole galaxy out there. For every star in the Milky Way, mm-hmm. there's another galaxy, right? Yeah. That's a lot of galaxies. There's a lot of galaxies, a lot of stars, and also we got a massive amount of time for all these civilizations right. to th- thrive. Because, I mean, our, our universe has been around for, what, 14 billion years? Yeah, just about, So right? civilizations could have come and gone. We've only already been around for a handful of... Well, our civilization's only been around for in its current form in a few decades. So right. for us to be even conceiving these ideas now is just phenomenal, I think. Yeah, they don't really take into account the amount of time or yeah. whether that time overlaps with ours. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's part of the... Like, The problem with the Drake equation is that, sure, let's say his number was right, which then now that 20 doesn't seem like such a great number anymore because 20 civilizations over 14 billion years, Mm -hmm. it's not very many. It's not very many civilizations. So this is why this question is so hard to answer, that it's like, yeah, we're not alone. Maybe. 
Yeah. And you also you got to think that, you know, we're in this incredible age of scientific discovery. So now we're actually putting Drake's equation to test. Because mm -hmm. before we didn't actually have the means to do this. Yeah. So now we are actually building these incredible space telescopes. We're, in, we're you know, having stu stupidly advanced ground-based telescopes. And we're starting to look for other worlds around other stars. And we've discovered thousands of exoplanets orbiting other stars. And Kepler, for one, the Kepler Space Telescope, right. NASA's uh, Space Telescope, has, has, yeah, Kepler's awesome, he, has found many, many planets orbiting within the habitable zones of its stars. Okay, and, habitable zones, I'm going to stop you. Yeah. Habitable zone, let's explain it for people who don't know. Habitable zone. Well, we live in one. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of happy about that. It's, it's the right spot from a star that's not too far away or too close yep. for that star. Because every star is going to be a little different, right? Yeah, it's not too hot, not too cold. It's the Goldilocks zone. Goldilocks zone. It's clever. Like clever, it. Clever, isn't like it? it. Um, so a planet that orbits around its, its star in the habitable zone, if it's a small star, the habitable zone tends to be closer because that star is cooler. If mm -hmm. it's bigger, hotter, the habitable zone is further out. So mm -hmm. there's a variety of habitable zones. And we're basically looking for um, Earth, true Earth-like planets. So we're looking for planets that are within habitable zone and have atmospheres. Yeah. Because we're looking for life as we know it. So we know life lives on Earth. We live in the habitable zone of our star. Right. So therefore, if we can find another Earth-like planet, we may be able to find Earth-like life. But that's life as we know it. Right, and that's another problem with the Drake Equation, that yep. they could be communicating active extraterrestrial life that don't communicate the way we do, or exactly. that don't live the way we do. So, this is a complicated answer to are we alone, but I think we could probably just say that we're not. I mean, we're not alone. I don't think we are. I don't think we are. No, either. I don't think we are. It but be, the, it, I just don't think we but can. But that's it. I mean, we, we know we're alone at the moment because nobody else is talking to us. But, sure. you know, until science finds evidence of another alien life in another world. Yeah. Or if one just knocks on our door. I it mean, turns up. The, it's, it's, a, it's a big question, but it's got a simple answer. So we've actually started looking for alien life, not just in kind of abstract ways, but with Kepler looking for habitable exoplanets, mm -hmm. with other space telescopes looking even further and looking in way cooler ways. We're even looking in our own solar system. But if you want to know more about that, you're going to have to come back later this week. So make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus, and you can find out more about aliens tomorrow. If you prefer something a little more down to earth, click here to watch the series that we just did on human migration. And also come say hi on Twitter to me, I'm at Trace Dominguez, and Ian is at Astro Engine. <laughs>